In this video, I'm going to discuss representational state transfer or REST or RESTful web services. GNS3 now supports a REST API. We could look at the compute nodes on our system. So I'll paste that in. And in the output, you can see that I have different node types available. The compute ID is the GNS3 VM. That's the IP address of the GNS3 VM. That's its name, port number, protocol. I'm also running GNS3 on my Mac and this is the name of my local Mac. So those are the two compute nodes available. I'm running a compute node on the GNS3 VM as well as locally. Now I could create a project by using a post, but rather than doing that, I'm gonna do a get. Get allows me to retrieve information. So I'm gonna say get localhost v2 projects. This shows me the various projects available on my system. I've created a lot of projects when creating GNS3 Talks videos. The one that I'm looking at here is Paramico 2. So I'm gonna use Control F and do a search for Paramico 2. There it is. And this is the project ID. So I'm gonna store that ID in Sublime Text. I'll actually copy this entire piece of code. The format used here is a JSON format. It does various things, but one of the things it does is it provides human readable text. In other words, it allows us as humans to read what's going on in the output of a REST API command, for example. So we've got the name of our project the GNS3 documentation then shows you how to create nodes by using a command such as the following. It's essentially looking at the project ID and then nodes, but it's using a post to create a node. I'm not gonna create a node at this point. I wanna see what nodes are in the project. So I'm gonna copy the project ID. I'm gonna use a get. And for now, I simply won't use the nodes option. I've just run a get on that project and there are the details of the project. But what I'll do now is look at the nodes in the project. So as an example, you can see here, we've got a Cisco IOS V layer two, four, zero, five, five, hyphen four. You can see details of that node. So, Here's that node with that name. We can see how interfaces on that node are connected to other devices through the GUI. And we can now see that through the REST API, gigabit 00, gigabit 01, gigabit 02. There are other interfaces on this node that we're not currently using. And as we scroll down further, we can see more information, such as that the symbol used is a multi-layer switch. Scrolling down a bit further, we can see that there is a Docker node as well with the name IP term. So what I'll do is simply take the node ID for the one switch and copy it to Sublime text, so this is a node switch four. And what I can do now is use that node ID in Postman to make sure that I'm only looking at that single node. And there you go. There are the details of that individual node. At the moment, the status is stopped. So let's see if we can programmatically start up the switch. The documentation shows us how 
we need to use a post to the project and to the individual node and we use the command start to start up the node. So this is going to be a start but it's a post rather than a get. Before I press send notice the node is currently off. It's stopped. Click send. Notice the icons have gone green. The node is starting up and I could open up a console to the node and you can see it's now booting. So what I'll do is leave that window open. Here's the node. Here's the console to the node. And here's Postman. And what I'll do is stop that node. Notice the node is stopped. And in the console, I see that the process has completed. My Telnet session is broken to that node. I'll look at my previous command, which was a start, and send that again. Notice the node has turned on. Just make Postman bigger so we can see more information here. Notice we have command line details here. We are turning on that individual node. And again, if I open up a console, you can see that the node is booting up. Now you may think that using a REST API like this is complicated, but it's the future. Network programmability, APIs, network automation are the future. You wouldn't want to do this manually like I'm doing it through Postman. Postman gives you a nice a GUI interface to learn how to do things and to send basic REST API commands to a device. As shown in the documentation, you probably want to use curl and either use a bash script or a Python script or, or some other type of application to integrate better with GNS3. The point is, you can now create an application that can build an entire GNS3 topology, spin it up, turn it off, change links, and so forth through a programmatic application programming interface, in this case, a REST API. This is really powerful and gives third-party developers a lot of options for integrating and working with GNS3. No longer is a human required to build a topology and open a topology. You can do everything programmatically. Note please that GNS3 does provide a lot of documentation. There are a lot of options available to you for writing code and manipulating GNS3. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.